think it's time we stop children what's that sound I'll never bother look what's going down I must ask the honourable gentleman to withdraw the term that I think he used I think I heard the term pipsqueak they remind me of my two young boys squabbling at bath time Hello and welcome to the Sean and Simon Show. I'm Simon. And I'm Sean, hey. And uh, we have a special guest today. Uh, introduce yourself, please. Hey, I'm Craig. <laughs> yeah, um, but how do we introduce Craig? Craig. Well, he's, he's my housemate. <laughs> yeah, and he's been very supportive of the show. He has, yeah. Good friend. So we thought we'd... We quite, quite like his views on things as well, so... Yeah. Uh, we thought we'd... We'd bring him on the show and see how it goes down. This is yeah. uh, episode four of Film Ian. Yeah, and it, as we said, it's a special edition. The Craig edition. Yeah, the Craig edition. The Craig edition. Shall we mark it as that? Yeah, why not? All right, awesome. That'd be awesome, yeah. Yeah, and we've got a good show up for you today. We've got the usual debate, um, as suggested by Craig today, actually, since it's the Craig edition. Uh, we also have um, My Opinion Is, as standard, and the film review. Film review should be good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. It was a good film. Brilliant film. I this enjoyed week. it, but that's so not that's not that's really what I had a You time. always do this. I'm just giving them a <laughs> bit of a teaser. It's a little teaser. Oh, right. I wasn't gonna go fully into it. <coughs> well that's how you always do that. That's how it starts. So, so I'm saying I wasn't be wary. gonna do it, don't worry. Alright. Okay, so the debate. The, the debate, debate this week. What's the debate on, Craig? Um, what did we decide in the end? Identity, identity, I think. Identity, yeah. yeah. Identity. Nice and professional, nice and clean. Oh, well, this is his first time. I know. I'm not, Give I'm him not, a break. I'm man. not. I'm not being horrible. I'm just, you know, making an amusing so, observation. Starting off, what are your views on identity? My views on identity. Yeah. Well, where do I begin? Um, where do you begin? Really Come on, spin it. When we were discussing it, I mean, one of my things was, you know, discussing the issue surrounding religion right. and how. You know, I don't necessarily think our religious or anti-religious views should define us. I am an atheist, but I'm not defined by my atheism. I think, you know, I'm defined much more as an individual. I'm a person. I have right. different views on various different things. That one thing doesn't define me. It's, it's not an important part of my personality. Yeah, but the thing about atheists is you don't have a religion, right? Yeah, so you can hardly but define yourself by something that... Is that nothing. doesn't exist. Is nothing. No, but you look at people like Richard Dawkins, who clearly defines himself as an atheist, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all for Richard Dawkins, I'm a big supporter of his, and I think maybe in this society, you know, if you are an atheist, you need to have that sort of, you know, combative stance. But right. I know it doesn't define me as an individual. Yeah, I'd but rather live in a society where I don't have to say, I am an atheist to people. Okay, yeah. I would rather be judged as a person on my own merits rather than just on that one view. In this society, you're not really asked, are you? Well, I'm never asked what religion I am. Yeah, I suppose as, as societies become more and more secular, yeah, um, religions play a, an increasingly less important role and it's become more about uh, your political ideology or, or your views on consumerism or something like that. It's like when you consider the, the battle between the West and the Middle East and you, you kind of look at that and as, as, a, as a whole, the West defines themselves as a capitalist consumerist nation whereas the Middle East defines themselves as a religious nation. But then I don't define or, myself or as a religious in that sense. I don't define myself as a social democrat. Okay. You so what you're saying is identity is much more than one particular thing. Yeah, essentially. But when you can when you compare that to say someone who is fundamentalist in their religious beliefs, they define themselves as say a Christian or as being Islamic. Yeah. They that that's something they can cling on to. Yeah. So in a way you could say that possibly the lack of religion in your life gives way to the lack of identity, or the lack of being able to claim one's identity based on the lack of religion. I don't think so. I think it's, it's in claiming that it claims that you're a part of a community, but I think there's more to that fundamentalist Christian or fundamentalist Muslim than that. They, they are, you know, as, as, we've, as we've established, fundamentalists, but well, about, there's more to that person. What about They're part of a community. What about defining yourself in a way of hobbies, for example? Again, that's one element of your individuality. You can't. I don't think you can define define yourself on one thing. I, as an individual, am a product of many 
James. Right. How would you define yourself, Greg? Um, I think you define people as like how they are, like their yeah. personality. If they're kind, if they're funny, if the um, like it doesn't matter what they do, like what hobbies they're into. Uh-huh. Obviously, if they have a creepy hobby, like <laughs> stuffing diamonds or something. <laughs> Nope. But yeah. But I agree with Craig. Just because you have a hobby. I had a different hobby last year than what I had this year. Yeah. Mm. No, I didn't. But couldn't you say what hobbies you participate in make up your identity? So, like, let's say you were into sports and your hobby changes from, say, weightlifting to swimming, right? Your identity is still about being fit and healthy. But I think that says something about your personality rather than defining so your So it's personality identity? I, I, I would say so, yeah. I so, but so. the thing is, personality doesn't include things like nationalism or political beliefs. And I know for a fact a lot of people class themselves or their identity as being quite, quite tightly constructed with their political beliefs. Hmm. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm British or... You know, they, they have nationalist tendencies, and that's their identity, so which has very little to do with their personality. Oh, well, no, okay, yeah. not very little to do with their personality, but their personality takes a takes a back seat. Okay, And their, their yeah. role of being British amongst other British people is more important than, say, whatever their personality is. I want to argue with that, but I can't at the minute. I don't really have any point. In particular, about I, I know I get what you're saying. You've drawn you've drawn an interesting distinction between individuality and personality. But identity is how other people see you, and that's it. Really. That's true. You can't, yeah. You can't. You can define your own identity through ways of like putting up an illusion. Yeah. But like your personality, like you can't change your personality really. Uh-huh. You can pretend, but you can't change it properly. Like you'll always be who you are. Yeah. And it, your identity is what people see. And if you project something that isn't real, but yeah. you do it well enough, they're gonna they're gonna think your identity is that. But hmm. it's not. So That's a good point, though. Yeah. If you project yourself so much as a certain person, what's the difference between that and actually being like that? Well, I think Craig's point is that in, in identity is a construct. And if you construct a persona, that's not necessarily the person that you are underneath. Like Lady Gaga, for example. Okay, yeah. What is what is that all about? What is that all about? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, Do you know what it is? Do you think that's real? I don't think it is. No, well, but what I think, I think what she, identity. She she uses it as an identity, but I think there's more to her than that actually. What I'm saying though is the fact that she's portraying that as herself. What's the difference between that and that actually being herself? Because if she's actually doing it, then surely that the, by taking these actions of of being eccentric and and wacky, she is eccentric and wacky. No, but she's doing that to to. I'm not actually doing that, that becomes for show. her identity. I don't that think it does. Personality as well. Because I think you turn off the cameras and she's a different person. It's like lies, for example. Do the lies that you tell them, you know. Are they so, then part of your personality? It's the same thing. So, I, but the thing is, I don't, I don't see what difference having a camera on them makes. Because Whether there's she's, a camera she's or doing, not, she's doing she's things because she wants wacky and eccentric. She wants people to see this vision of her, this identity, shall we say? Yeah, and by doing that, by portraying that, that makes her that way. That makes I don't think her, it does. That makes it her identity. Her yeah. identifier is that craziness. So yeah, you're you're drawing a massive parallel between personality and identity. Yeah, and I think I've actually decided I agree with Craig on that. But it doesn't matter. I think it doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> How do you think it doesn't? What do you, what do you mean? Well, if you are under that spotlight, if that is your profession, maybe it would do well to do that. Maybe a lot of services are a lot different. You said before how you didn't think a short call was as nice behind closed doors. Yeah. Mm. It's something I've heard. 
I've heard it about a few celebrities, Patrick Stewart, Rowan Atkinson. No, I don't name them. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not there like, is no need for that. I'm not making specific <laughs> let's personal just attacks, I'm just saying these are well known rumours. We don't think we like. <laughs> I, know, I like these people, but I'm saying, I've met Patrick Stewart, so, you know, I thought it was a very nice man, but I've heard different things about him. That's my point. Okay. So what conclusion have we come to with, with the identity debate today? Well, I, I think basically it's opened my eyes and personality and identity are two different things. Craig? Yeah, I think how you portray yourself can be an illusion and that will be your identity. Yeah. And you've got a lot of control over that. Like, you can dye your hair, you can pretend to be something you're not, but deep down, your personality won't change. Yeah. I still... I'm, I'm still sticking with if that's who you are portraying yourself to be, if you're not epic failing at it, then that's who you are. I have to disagree with that. If you're portraying it and, and like, you're doing really well, then maybe that's how you are. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't see the difference between portraying it. Because it's a construct. But what we're saying is... But people, what makes it a construct? It's not fundamental, is it? It's not a fundamental part of who you are. The point is, it's a construct. It's artificial. But so is everything. I don't think it is. I have fundamental parts of my personality that aren't constructed, and they're a more honest part of me. Yeah, but what, what do you define as constructed? I mean, everything in a way is constructed through, your, through your upbringing, through through your, your yeah, morality. Yeah, but it's a, con a conscious yeah, but construct. Your moralities are formed through through teaching and education. So even your, something that you class as as simple as don't murder is based on laws, is based on the way you were brought up. And I would like to class that as something that's built in, not a construct. And that's something that I would like to class in my identity. I don't murder people. Yeah, it's, it's built into my personality. It's something about who I am. But it's where, do you, draw, where do you draw the line? Yeah. Something, I draw the line at something that you consciously construct. But people have consciously constructed that in you. Not you personally haven't. Well, yeah, but I, I, I'm really struggling to see the, the well, line. I don't, see, I don't see the struggle. Well, I'm saying that identity is not something you see. Well, you do, but people see it. Yeah. Like, so that is identity. And yes, if they're faking it, then it's still their identity. If, they're, if a person's seen it, believes sure, it. Sure, sure. But it might not be true, but it might very well be true. I mean, if you're honest to yourself, then it is true. But I don't see what, what being honest to yourself it means is, is, in, is involved in that. exactly how you feel you should. I, but I could tomorrow go and get a wig and, well, I'm going to be careful here, <laughs> and, and get, you know, leather jackets and big leather boots and walk around like a goth. But that's not who you are. How do you know? That might Because be who, I know you. That might be who I am when I wake up that day. If I think I want to dress like a goth, what's stopping me being, what's stopping that being but you me? Want, you want the world to think you're a goth, but... The more to you why if why you, do you want the world to if think you that? truly think many that, reasons and if you truly think that <laughs> many reasons do it there we go do it and then that becomes your identity yeah it does why are you doing it though because you want to because you want to precisely uh -huh. because you want to which therefore means it's your personality so it yeah. usually it is an, a reflection of your personality it's a reflection, perhaps, of certain elements of your personality, but it's not your personality as a whole. Exactly. There are, there are reasons why you might want to, because peer pressure, for example, many reasons. You might just want to fit in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can project your illusion. I feel like we could talk for this, talk about this for ages, but we are, we drastically yeah. running up time here. So, so um, it ties in quite nicely. This, uh, I, I felt that was good. That was a really good debate. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, the, ne the next feature. My opinion is... And my any any new listeners, my opinion is is where Simon gives us an opinion, and it's it's my job, and in, in this case, it's mine and Craig's job to argue against it. Or, Not necessarily against. No, no, we we have exactly. we have to pose, <laughs> pose a view based on what he's said, and then at the end of it, we conclude on whether either of our minds have changed. Yeah, and my opinion is that the media coverage of celebrity is often quite wrong morally wrong i uh -huh. think and i'm pointing towards the chill inquiry here and the uh -huh. phone hacking scandal particularly and saying that 
you know, is it right to hack the phones of Steve Coogan or whoever, any famous footballer, just to decide who is sleep, just to find out who's sleeping with who? Is that is that right to do? And well, I something don't think that, that jumps out at me when you said that was um, the you know like Heat magazine and all these kind of yeah. magazines, women's magazines that mm. make detail like you know print all these pictures of celebrities with oh they've got a bit of cellulite yeah and that angers me because whether people like it or not these celebrities are humans yeah and everybody knows that well, i mean why do they sell why do you think they sell because i don't know people have a vested interest in these people don't they and they say it's in the public interest but through talking to girls right you right. find out <laughs> we, don't, we don't talk to ladies. We, we don't. At least not in the same way that Craig does. We're out of that circle. <laughs> well, they they like to look at the ones that look better than them. Right. They think inspiration. Uh, they've actually said that we want to see them look good, even if we know it's like not possible. Right. They just want to see it, and they also want to see people at the worst. Yeah, I can understand that because if you've got a, a celebrity idol, someone who you idolise. And when you see that not only are they human, but they they look worse than you on a particular day, I suppose that could make make someone who's who's got a particularly vain nature about them feel a bit better. But what right do we have to invade that person's privacy and to judge them based on one off day? Imagine if the tables were turned and you were in that position. Yeah, I'd be pretty annoyed. Yeah, and the thing that the thing that really wound me up. With this whole phone hacking scandal was keep bringing people, it back. Keep bringing I'm bringing it back, back because it's a perfect summary. The point is, you know, people are fine, you know, for hacking Ryan Giggs's phone or whoever. You know, I'd say his name, are you? People, <laughs> they said it on Have I Got News for You, and that's my that's my canary down the mine. Okay. And um, <laughs> you probably have to pay a massive fine. <laughs> that's fine. I don't care. I'll pay it. <laughs> no, <won't>. big man. <laughs> but my point is, the fine was doing that, but as soon as Millie Dowler's hacked different story yeah, but she's okay. but she's just as ordinary as Ryan Giggs as Steve Coogan as Hugh Grant they're, they're all human at the end of the they're day exactly but, yeah, but what about politicians again they're people uh, yeah they're people but the thing is these people run the country people with private and lives though I mean and what where do we where do we draw the line getting back to Millie Dowler um, the the parents actually thought that she could have been alive that I got false hope all of a sudden, because he saw these messages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the problem. That that was wrong. There's a big difference, maybe. But I I still think maybe there is a space for it. With I know this is this sounds bad, but with again politicians, people who have power, and I know celebrities have a form of power through influence, but politicians have direct power, right? Yeah, and. I think, for, for, in a in a way, I used to be very against this idea, but I've kind of I've grown up a bit yeah. and realised that what a politician's private life is could not only affect their work but affect their policies and affect what. Like for example, there was that um, that homosexual MP, the closet homosexual MP. Yeah, he was a Tory, I think, and he was trying to legalise cottaging in public toilets. Now, no one knew he was a homosexual. Right. And that was an example of his private life affecting his policy. But then private life will always affect policy. Yeah, but if you've got someone as hypocritical as John Major saying, back to basics, you know, we're all about the family, whilst he's having an affair... Yeah. That's not right. That needs to be outed. And that's, that's a personal issue. The, the public issue, need to turn around to him and say, how do you expect us to follow this when you can't yourself? The public deserves the right to know about things like that because the, the the nature of a politician deserves the nature of a politician's life needs to be analysed but then yeah okay how can we, you follow a prime minister without knowing anything about the them? public has a right to good honest policy making I can't dispute that right but my point is but I don't think turning up and telling the world we want you not to have affairs but I'm having an affair is good honest well, policy well yeah but where do you draw the line in dictating and investigating someone's personal life you know because then you're getting into very shady Territory. I'm not saying they should be monitored 24/7, but I'm just saying that there is a force of good that, is, that could have come. Well, out yeah, of that. course, but then that's a good argument for the free press. Right. You but see, I'm not sure if I'm a supporter of the of, of entirely free press. I don't know. I, 
I'm not sure about it, but I, I can see pros and cons. Well, yeah, there are pros and cons with everything, but... There are. It's one of the major problems of being a politics student. <laughs> my, my, my initial point is essentially that... I, I'm struggling to say my I really think like that. that celebrities can control it, though, because I've seen... Well, obviously, the Britney Spears whole meltdown thing that was yeah. happening. She couldn't, she, it looked like she couldn't like stop yeah. them, but I've seen interviews, and I'm going to have to say Lady Gaga again. Because yeah, well, no, she's a good example. Well, she said that it's just complete bull, that yeah. when people say that, oh God, I can't get rid of the cameras, they're on yeah. me all the time, and she says she can get rid of, like, she's one of the most followed people yeah. in the world. Yeah. And she, um, you hardly see any bad pictures yeah. of her. And she's very private about her love life and the other aspects of you her can private keep, life. You can work hard. Obviously, you're going to have to work harder. When that's you're yeah, that's the, the thing. When you, when you but get it's privacy. You can get privacy. The whole world okay, is not definitely. under observation, surveillance, whatever. You don't... See, I really, really agree with that. Honestly, if, if you want to be a celebrity, you've got to work at it. And there are celebrities who can control, who do control... The level of, of press is out there. Yeah. You can get what you want in this world, and you if just you have want to give privacy, other people what they want. I if think you that's want, an quote. sorry. Yeah, and <laughs> if you want, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You said a point I was really passionate about, so I kept interrupting you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Carry on. But if you want privacy, you can get it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If agree. you want it enough. Yeah. So I guess the point is that it's an inherent problem, not only in the journalists that contribute to it, yeah. but also the celebrities that are seeking this attention. Obviously the uh, phone hacking scandal was pretty bad, and they didn't know it was happening, and whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, you can stop it. Okay. With a super injunction. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them getting carried out. <laughs> I think there's about 13. That's, that's not loads. That's not a bucket load. It's a few. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, my opinion is... Is my opinion final this week? Well, I don't know. Is your opinion final? Well, what's your opinion? My opinion is that, <laughs> that media coverage of celebrity is wrong. Um, mm, I, don't I don't... I think there is a place for it, but... I yeah, I think there's a place for it, definitely. I don't think it. But we've it grown up with it. But as it stands, it's we haven't known any different. Mm. I don't see it going anywhere. I don't see it get. It could teeth. I don't think it could get any worse than it is. It's pretty bad, and if this is the worst of it, like I don't see what else they can do that could make it even worse. So we should just live with it because it's you know. It's not I think get there anywhere. is a certain uh, a certain. What's the word? Being a celebrity is not all not all good. You can't expect that to be all rainbows and sunshine. People can drop out of it if they want. That's what I'm saying. Like, they it's just got to be boring. Well, yeah. <laughs> there is there's got there's a downside to every job. And if the media coverage is the downside to being famous, then you the thing know, is, you can do it how you want. Like, compared to a bin man. Look at Kate Bush. <laughs> Yeah. What was she doing now? I don't I have know. No idea. What was she doing when she was singing? Well, singing, but like, <laughs> what was she doing in between? She fell out the spotlight. That's what she wanted to do. That was maybe the perfect way to go. Well, for her, it was. Yeah. She didn't have to get followed around, and there's a lot of celebrities out there that don't. Mm. Lily Allen stated that she didn't want to. Um, she there's a lot of stuff in the press about her, but she says that she could. If she wanted to. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, even if you take that stance, you still get a negative media campaign against you. Lady Gaga's had that. Yeah, but... Heather Mills. Heather Mills. <laughs> Don't get Heather me Mills. <laughs> what a joke. You know how much I love Heather Mills. Loving the uh, <laughs> <laughs> comments. I, uh... Well, take... Look at... Take that. Okay. Look at the media coverage they faced when they were famous. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Yeah. It was global. They were a global phenomenon for years, and then they disappeared for like what ten years or something, nine years or something. Right. And they disappeared. You heard nothing from them. 
Well, because people didn't care because they disappeared. Right, and that's it. If you've got this, if you've got the power to make people care about you, but you shouldn't have to you just have disappear. That. You well, should be able to still do. What are you saying you, then? What? You should be able to remain in the spotlight for your talents, for the things that you produce. But you yeah, don't but have to disappear. You don't have to disappear from that domain. Critics from, from that domain. What? what? <laughs> you went into your little world then. But the thing is, the Adele. Right. Okay. Are we okay, just wasting so celebrities? I here? think we're getting to that point, aren't we? Yeah, but you don't have to be like looked at negatively. Yeah, like, precisely. You don't have to be always in the papers. You can just do go about life properly when you're in the when you're in the spotlight. No, but you should act you've got, proper. You've got a really good point there. Look at Adele. I disagree. She's got a very. She's not got the the typical pop star view, right? But I, saw, I it, saw. It's in the media's interest I to depict Adele in this way because then they can go on the offensive and say, "Look at you, nasty other newspapers having to go at people who don't look particularly great." I'm not they can take the up the high ground. I'm not, it's in the newspaper's interest to defend Adele. I'm not they will attack newspapers. and defend whoever is in their defence. Right, I get your point, but I'm not targeting newspapers in particular. I'm saying, well, say, magazines Heat well. Magazine, right? Same I thing. saw one the other Same week thing. when they said, oh, look at such and such smoking, right? Adele is a proponent, is, is a proud smoker. She's, she, she's openly admitted to smoking. Right. It's never heard of. She, it's never mentioned in Heat Magazine. Like, oh, look at Adele with a cigarette. It's never mentioned. Because, the, it's because, the carts because these magazines... Have she has no shoots with a cigarette. What I'm saying is, is when all these celebrities are trying to be perfect and do all this stuff, they form this image and they set this precedent. They've done it to themselves. They've, made, they've meant that, ooh, look at Lindsay Lohan with a cigarette. She's going off the rails. I don't think they have done it themselves, because look at Victoria Beckham. She's presented this, you know, perfect... Yeah, and uh, every time she and she 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 spends thousands on her hair, thousands yeah, and on I've her never, fashion, and I've never seen thousands any on, negative press surrounding her. That's not true. There is plenty of negative press in these women's magazines. So one from cover, in fact, I think it was this week's one, saying, "Oh, I can't cope with my kids or something. I can't cope with Harper Seven, <laughs> right?" And you know, and it had a picture of her with like wrinkles and stuff, and showing her aging. It's exactly what it, what they've done it to themselves by by pushing themselves and by say it, by portraying themselves as this kind of in, inhuman god or goddess. That's made the that's given them the media access to say, look, they are human. Well, boom. I still disagree. Laid it down. I think the media will defend who got an attack. Oh, just call, just call it final. Just call it final. I'm calling it final. I'm calling it final. Right. Okay, right. My opinion is final. Go on. My opinion is final. That media coverage of celebrity, as it currently stands, I will concede that, is final. Right. It's fact is wrong. What? Did you say it's? Did you say it's wrong? No. I concede the fact that you concede. I, I concede right, in the okay. sense that my original opinion was wrong. Okay. But as it currently stands, I the media disagree. coverage of celebrity I, I, is final. I disagree. What did you think, Craig? What's your opinion on it? Yeah, sorry, Craig. On what? Final. Your final opinion. Well, I think that obviously the phone hacking scandal was a bit far, but we live in a world where we all know we can talk to someone at the other end of the world, and when you know someone, when someone's in spotlight, you're gonna they're going to have to be seen. Sure. And we're going to have to know every little cat fart about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you're not interested, then you don't... You don't... That's, yeah, that's a good point. You don't have to necessarily listen. Like if you don't... My throat. If you don't... Oh, <laughs> if you don't want to know about it, don't... Don't read the papers. Don't... Don't read the magazines. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with a lot of yeah, things right now because I haven't been looking. The only thing I, I know is from work when I'm sat and scanning the stuff. You don't have to look. I know, yeah. It's just something to read. So, this week's film review. Okay. You just raised the point there that I want to oh. argue with. No, no, it's no, just, no. You've called it final now. It's just something to read. You know, that, that disturbs me. Why? Because you're not boring behind the pillars. We just accept it. You know, it's just it's just there. Yeah. You know. 
Yeah, but I don't have to read point. it. Maybe you're just as bad I, for reading it. I took it. the choice to read it. Maybe you're just as bad for reading it if you don't agree with it. I don't read it. Well, I think I think the well, that's the point. You point. are just as bad for reading it because it's just there. But I don't think it is bad. So. Well, my opinion. Finally, this is going to be the last uh, anything said on this because look how long we've taken. Yeah. All right. I suppose it's a special edition. We've got an extra person, so. Yeah, Marvin is contending. Um, what what I believe is that top end celebrities are portraying such a high profile and such a perfect image of themselves that spills out and sets a precedent and then that then forces other people to try and live up to that other celebrities and as soon as they don't it becomes a, a point of media speculation and as soon as anyone puts a foot out of line and that's kind of become the way it is and there's only themselves to blame only the top end celebrities to blame for that I don't, I don't right. Uh, well, I don't know. I, you can't be there. It doesn't mean it's right now. But uh, you can't blame the media for that. They're going to print what sells at the end of the day. I think it's both media and the individuals. But yeah. Okay. I'm happy to go with that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Film, film review. Come on. on. What's the film this week, Sean? Film this week is Shutter Island. Shutter Island. Courtesy of. Uh, Stephen Austin and Christopher Mather for getting me that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Nice little fact for you there. Yeah, little factoid. So, Craig, you haven't heard much from you. What did you think of Show Island? <laughs> well, <laughs> he's looking at me quite angrily there. <laughs> go on, go on. Well, the first ten minutes were quite enthralling. Uh -huh, and then what happened? And the last ten minutes were quite enthralling also. <laughs> what happened in the interim? Um. He's well, there's a big blank. Big, there's a big blank. blank. Hmm, I, don't, I don't know what happened. I why? guess it was quite confusing, wasn't it? Is that what you mean? <laughs> no, no, I felt <laughs> 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 I've seen it before. Dedication. I've seen it before. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. At least you can talk about it. What did you think, Simon? <laughs> good film. Good film, that's what you're going to say. Good film, yeah. No, I thought... I thought it was, a, it was great because the ending was, I think... I think there's room to argue. Uh, th uh, should we should we spoil the ending? No, no. Or should we should we put a spoiler no. alert? No, 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 no definitely no. not. I think. Well, how do we review it properly if we can't talk about the well, ending? Well, I just want to say the ending for me was beautiful. But it's such a it's such a sort of integral part of the review that I don't know if I can review it without the ending. Okay, we'll, we'll put a spoiler alert. Okay, time. spoiler alert. I think yes, it's, it's difficult. You know, you could argue either way. You know, whether the main character, I've forgotten his name already, what's he called? Ted. Ted. Teddy Daniels. Whether Teddy Daniels is an admin or whether he has been framed. You could argue it either way. There's a room realistically, I think. And that shows to me how scary it is, you know, that your individuality, your personality, coming back to the original debate, is, you as a person are in such control and well, it's in the hands of these people. You know, they can make you look like a woman. Yeah, that, yeah. that was a terrifying idea. I like that. I, I like that idea when linking it to that Rachel Salondo in the cave. Yeah. And where she was a, a prominent doctor. And just because these people, the authorities on, on this said, you're crazy, anything you say is crazy. Yeah. And it's become part of your illness. But what I, I disagree with your view that that could be the ending because he was dreaming about things that... Yeah, he hadn't he he hadn't been even conceived of yeah. in the idea of him of his of his wife murdering his children. It's it's not as open ended as as Inception, Inception. for example. Inception wasn't open ended. Well, Inception confused me. I don't think we're not we're not getting into Inception. No, no, I'm just gonna say at the ending, the spinning top started to wobble. It wouldn't have done that if it was a dream. Did they wobble? Yeah. I don't think it, it moves. No, it moves very slightly at the end, um, and they wouldn't have left that in. Okay, let's move on from that. This is <laughs> Shutter Island, mate. Right? But what I'm saying is, he was dreaming of things. They, 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 what you're saying is, he was crazy, and they gave him this idea that his wife killed it, her, his kids, and all this stuff, right? Yeah. And then he killed his wife. He was dreaming about things related to that that hadn't, or, or even specific things like, you should have saved me, 
and things like that. And, and he was having dreams about this woman, about this little girl rather, and then they showed him a picture and that was the, that was a little girl. But that ties into what Rachel Solander was saying about the hallucinations. But how can he have a, a hallucination of something before he knows it exists? He could have seen the picture in the background somewhere. Oh. Well, subconsciously. Know. I think he could have done. They would have shown that, they would have made more of a thing of that on the film. Maybe, yeah. They were maybe, okay. I, I genuinely think it's, it was supposed to end how it ended, and when he, he, he gave himself up to die, that was a beautiful, beautiful ending. He would have rather died as a good man than lived as a monster. And that, I think, to me, that was, that was perfect. Well, how was he going to die as a good man? Because he already was a monster. Yeah, but if he, he convinced himself that he was Teddy Daniel still. He didn't, though, in the end. No, in the end he knew he wasn't, but he was so trying he was to die be. A monster. He was trying to be, though. He was trying to be. He, in his mind he knew he was a monster, but yeah. he wasn't. I don't think he was a monster. I think his wife was the monster. Well, yeah. yeah, obviously I don't think he was a monster, but he felt so much grief, he felt so much guilt over killing his wife. I think he did the right thing. I would have done the same. Oh, uh, she she needed to go. Perspective. Perspective <laughs> she needed to get out of here. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> he felt he was a monster, so that's what led to him doing that. Okay. It was beautiful. It was a good ending. And yeah. to be fair, I do think he was a crazy person, and maybe I just don't want to accept it. Yeah, it was difficult, wasn't it? It was very difficult. Yeah. So Marks out of ten? That's uh, or did five you do? Marks out of five, isn't it? Out of five. I'd I'd say out five out of five for that. I'd say four, but four and a half. Oh that's, that's cool. We've five, got a nice half average. Five, yeah. It's it's high anyway. It's very high. It's nine out of ten really. Um you know that's 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 a very good first. Yeah, yeah. I just like to take this opportunity as well as we're closing to the end of the podcast. Last week's film Ian did really well we got quite a lot of views so appreciate yeah, that much thank you hopefully yeah. we've maintained that this week oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> been, been a long one as well this week but uh, so if you've stuck with us thanks we've got we've got Craig with us which I hope we, has been entertaining I'm excited to be here <laughs> you're, looking, you're looking for all day um, don't forget to check out this week's squeeze box yeah and tune in on Thursday at nsrlive.co.uk is it is it? I don't know. I, I thought it was... Yeah, it's okay. NSLive.co.uk. I'll trust you on that one. Um, yeah. Google NSLive. Thursday, <laughs> 10 past 12 till half one. Uh, get in touch with us on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, Twitter account, we are Sean and Simon. And the Facebook is just the Sean and Simon Show. Yeah. And that's it, really. Um, I've been Simon. I've been Craig. And I've been Sean. And you've been great. See you later, guys. Bye. The yeah. It's time we stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. I must ask the honourable gentleman to withdraw the term that I think he used. I think I heard the term pipsqueak. They remind me of my two young boys squabbling at bath time. <laughs>